So I ran a poll a couple of weeks ago and the most requested video was a photography guide for the Canon 4000D and I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. But the second most requested video was to create a video guide for the Canon 4000D. And I get this question asked almost on a weekly basis. Is the Canon 4000D any good for video? And one of the reasons why people are asking that question is because this camera is one of the cheapest DSLR cameras that Canon produces. You can currently pick up a brand new camera and kit lens for about $400 in the United States, roughly £330 in the United Kingdom. And because of that, many people are looking at it as a possible cost-effective way to start creating video for a new YouTube channel, for their business videos, travel videos, vlogs, etc. And so that is what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be giving some tips and tricks to get the best video possible out of your Canon 4000D. So when it comes to video on the Canon 4000D, the maximum resolution that you can output is 1080 at 24 and 25 frames per second. You have a recording limit, which will stop the recording after 29 minutes and 59 seconds, or after four gigabytes is reached on your SD card, whichever comes first. And generally that will be the four gigabyte limit, which in turn means that it cuts out after around 12 minutes or so of recording. So let's say you get around 12 minutes of video recording before you have to press record again. You also get Canon's profile picture settings that you can use. And for our video today, we're going to be using the neutral and faithful picture profiles that have a lot less saturation added to them. And one thing that you will need to appreciate about creating good quality video on the Canon 4000D is that it will not be an easy task. And there are a number of reasons for this. The first reason is that there isn't a flip out screen on this camera. In fact, the screen isn't even touch screen. So you have to go old school when it comes to controlling things. There isn't any dual pixel autofocus for video either. Instead, you have a much more primitive, slower autofocusing system. So trying to keep your face in focus is going to be tricky. There are no speakers in this camera, so you won't hear any audio playback till after you upload the content to your computer or Mac. There isn't a headphone jack and also there isn't a microphone input so you can't record good quality sound directly into the camera. Yes, there is a reason why Canon sells this camera so cheaply and that's because it is a bare bones DSLR camera. They've taken out all of the bells and whistles functionality of the more modern expensive cameras. So straight off the bat, you are dealing with a number of limitations that you have to work around. And the challenge for us today is going to be using the Canon 4000D and the 18 to 55 millimeter EFS lens to produce some quality video content. And first up, we're going to go about setting up our 4000D for video in the YouTube studio here. Now to get good footage on any camera, we need to have good light. And in a studio setting like this, I have a lot of lights available to me to help me create video content. Now you might not necessarily have as many options available to you in the way of lights. However, natural light is always a good option. So sitting near a window can produce all the light you need to film with. And to get content looking good on our 4000D, we need to expose our image correctly and we need to make sure our face is in focus. So first up, set your camera to video mode and you can do this using the top dial here. So scroll all the way around to the video mode. We also want to set up our camera to use the correct video system. And I want to output PAL as I'm in the UK. And for our friends in Europe and India, you will probably want to use PAL as well. If you're in the United States, you will probably want to set it to NTSC. To do this, hit the menu button down here. Scroll across to the second menu and tap down to the video system option. Select that and choose your relevant video output. As mentioned earlier, we want to shoot in HD, that's 1920 by 1080. And to do this, we just hit the menu button again, 
scroll across to the second menu and we're going to select 1920 by 1080 at 25 frames per second. We also want to use the neutral picture setting and we can do this by going to the third menu, scrolling down to the picture style and selecting neutral. To get the best video results from our 4000D, we also want to have complete control over the exposure settings. And to do this, we tap the menu button. We change the very first option here, movie exposure to manual. And this will now allow us to control our aperture, shutter speed and ISO. So don't worry if you don't know what those are, we will be discussing these steps step by step so you can really set your camera up for the best video possible. We now want to select our focusing method and there are a couple of options available to us and we can view these by going to the first menu, selecting down to the AF method and choosing the second option with the smiley face and live mode written next to it. And this is supposed to work to try and keep our face in focus but it's nowhere near as advanced as the more modern dual pixel autofocus system in more sophisticated Canon cameras. Now through a lot of trial and error, I actually abandoned this method of autofocus because it really didn't work properly. My face was never really ever in focus when I tried to use it, even in a controlled studio environment like this. And so what I did was to go full manual focus and I eyeballed the focus on my chair looking roughly where my eyes would be, and I used the zoom function to get sharp focus on the writing on my chair, and then after I hit record and sat down, I pushed the chair back slightly to where I thought the focus would be. And I tried this a couple of times, and I also tried not to move my head too much while I was talking. Now this is very primitive, I know, but this is actually a method that was used a lot by content creators in the earlier days before things like dual pixel autofocus and eye tracking were a thing. So as you can start to see, it's going to be tricky setting this camera up for good focus. So the next thing we want to do is set up our camera for filming using the manual settings. And the first thing that we want to set up here is the shutter speed. And a general rule of thumb is that the shutter speed should be twice the frame rate. So our frame rate is 25 frames per second, and that means that we should set our shutter to 50. And we can do this very simply by using the scroll wheel at the top of the camera to set the shutter to 50, and we don't want to move that, we want to keep it set to 50. The next thing is to set our aperture and your max aperture will depend on the lens that you are using. And we're using the 18 to 55 millimeter EFS lens. And this has a max aperture of f-stop four. And we can set our lens to f-stop four by holding down the AV button here. And at the same time, we can turn the scroll wheel. And ideally, we want this open as much as possible. And so we set it to that f-stop four. The final parameter to set on our Canon 4000D is the ISO. And we can do this by tapping the Q button here, scrolling all the way down to ISO and selecting our ISO value. Now, if we set this too high, our picture will have a lot of noise added to it and we want to avoid that. So I'm going to set it to no more than ISO 800. Now I'm gonna take an exposure reading by pressing this button here, which has a star on top of it. And ideally we want this value to be between zero and minus one roughly. And that gives us the best hope of color grading this footage and lighting things up in post-production. I'm also going to change my lights around to help increase the amount of light on me to be able to bring that exposure reading closer to zero. What we don't want is for the picture to be too overexposed or too bright or too underexposed, basically too dark. Now the onboard mic on this camera is not great. So the next challenge is to get good sound. We can actually change the sound levels in the 4000D manually. And we can do this by going into the menu, tapping across to the second page, scrolling down to sound recording, setting it to manual, and then setting the record levels. And in this case, we want to increase the sound level slightly. And the reason I'm doing that is to ensure that the sound the camera picks up is nice and loud. Now, I don't actually intend on using the onboard sound of my Canon 4000D. Instead, I'm going to be using this, an external MP3 recording device called the H1 Zoom. And I'm going to record sound separately, and then I will sync the sound up in post-production. Now, you can also use your phone with a microphone to get good sound. And to be honest, anything apart from the onboard camera sound should be considered for your Canon 4000D video productions. And to set the sound on my H1 Zoom, I'm going to set the sound levels between minus six and minus 12 dB, and then I'm gonna hit record. And I'm going to press record on my 4000D at the same time, give it a second, then I'm going to clap, and that sharp sound is going to be a reference to help me sound sync later in post-production. So let's go ahead and record some video like we're making a YouTube video. <laughs> Clapping for audio sync. 
Hello, welcome to Kai Creative. My name is Kai and I'm a videographer, filmmaker, photographer, animator and all-round visual creative. Try not to move my head so much. I'm trying not to, because my head's it's got to be about there, right? Gonna be in focus about here. If you guys haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel already, do consider subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications. And don't forget to check out our Instagram and Facebook pages as well. And today I'm trying to use the Canon 4000D to create some YouTube studio content and I'm actually filming in HD now, but I will be upscaling it to 4K, so that should be interesting. And also the sound that you're listening to now is actually coming from my H1 Zoom lapel mic. If you want to hear the onboard sound, we're gonna switch it now. And now this is what it sounds like in this echoey room directly on the camera. And remember the 4000D doesn't have a mic input. So recording separate sound on an MP3 player or MP3 recording device like the H1 Zoom, or just using a mobile phone is a really good idea and then you can sound sync it in post-production. And we're gonna show you how to do that a little bit later in this video. So what do you guys think of the Canon 4000D for video? Is it something you're gonna try? Let me know down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. That'll do. Let's see if the face is in focus <laughs> for the 20th time. Okay, so very quickly, let's jump into Premiere Pro here to show you how you might want to sound sync this later on. So I've got my footage here and I'm just going to create a new sequence from that clip. And you can see here, this is my 4000D footage. I've also got the recording from my zoom mic. So you can see me here setting up the zoom mic and hitting record. And then what I do is I clap there and that is where I want to sync up my audio. And you can see if we zoom into these sound files here, just pop that there. And from our sound files here, you can see it's not gonna be very difficult to sync these up. All I need to do is see where those claps are and I can literally just pull that in. And I can zoom in more, see where I clap. There's a little bit of an echo. So you can just pull it in, just keep pulling it in a frame at a time until you get And we're going to try it And I've just done a few more claps to make it easier to sound sync here Hello, welcome to Kai Creative, my name is Kai So yeah, that is how you sound sync and then of course you can do your cuts from there Or you could just place the original audio with the new audio That is one of the easiest ways to sound sync manually Okay, so as you've seen, it's not entirely impossible to use this camera for a video setup in a YouTube studio like this, but this is a controlled environment with controlled lighting. It does take a little bit of time, but we can get the 4000D running in a way that is relatively usable. But how practical is it for video on the move, like vlogging or travel videos? Well, first up, let's talk about vlogging. And this is tricky because you can't really get good audio on this camera. And it might not be practical to have a separate mic option with you like a lapel mic attached to your clothes, especially if you just wanna go out and vlog. If you need to rely on the onboard sound, there is an option to turn on a wind filter. And you can do this by going into the menu, scrolling across to the second page, going down to sound recording and enabling the wind filter from there. Also, if you're out and about, you can't control your lights like you can in the studio. And so you might want to use the auto ISO function on your camera to compensate for different light levels. And you can do this on your 4000D by tapping the Q button, scrolling down to ISO and selecting the auto ISO function. Again, focus on your face is going to be tricky. One way to get good focus on your face is to get a rough idea of your arm's length by using a tree or a post or something like that. And then set your lens to focus manually use the magnifying glass button to zoom in and set the focus from there, and then hit the record button, turn the camera around and start vlogging. So again, let's try taking the 4000D outside and do some vlogging with it and see what we come up with. One of the issues that I found with this camera in particular is how the LCD screen is quite small and it's really hard to be able to discern or decipher what is in focus and what isn't in focus and you don't really know until you put it on a bigger screen at home. Another thing that is a little bit annoying is that you can't actually check the sound by playing it back on the camera. So when you're doing a playback, there's no speaker in this camera. So I was just watching my footage back a minute ago and I was like, I wonder if I said that correctly and I couldn't check because I can't hear anything coming out of the camera. Again, I won't know until I get back to hear what the sound quality is like, particularly if it's windy, how it's gonna affect the sound. So again, another tricky aspect to vlogging on the Canon 4000D. 
I've done is I've got a tree here. I'll go to this tree, about arm's length, it's about there from where my head is. And then I'm going to just focus in on that tree. There we go. So about there. Okay, so set this off a sec. <laughs> I don't know if this is in focus or not. I'm basically averaging where it's going to be focusing on my face. That's better. But because it's overcast today, what I have done is I've set the ISO to 100. So I haven't put it on auto, um, but I'm not battling against any harsh light conditions. I just realized that the image stabilization wasn't on for that little bit there. I'm trying it now with image stabilization. See how steady it is. Now that I'm sitting down, I am not walking and I've put image stabilization on now. That makes no so sense. So it, it, it's really steady, guys. Manual focus is on and image stabilization is on. There's a lot of wind. So cars are going past now and I'm walking on the main road trying to vlog. And I'm not sure how well the sound is going to pick that up. The wind filter is on as well. So technically, the wind that's blowing in the back shouldn't cause too much noise on the actual microphone. Oh. That. There isn't any form of digital image stabilization on this camera either so hopefully it's all going to be sorted out in the lens or just put the camera somewhere and talk to it is another option which is what I might do. Let's go and find somewhere to put the camera. Okay so I'm lining it up. So hopefully this is in focus kind of now. I've just placed it on a post and I think like you could probably use this for vlogging if you were really desperate but I probably would rather stick with my M50 or SL3 to be 100% honest with you. But I don't know, I'm gonna go back and check this footage and see how it sounds and how in focus or out of focus it is. So the methods I explained earlier were probably the most successful ways I could find to get relatively good focus and sound on the Canon 4000D when I tried going out and vlogging with it. And filming B-roll for travel videos can be done in a similar way. It's a little more easier as you can actually see the LCD screen and control your focus from there. So as you've seen, it's not impossible to film video with the Canon 4000D, but it's not easy. There are a lot of limitations and it can be quite fiddly getting things right, not to mention the extra kit and steps you need to take to get decent audio. So if you're considering purchasing a Canon 4000D for video, should you? Well, I would probably recommend not doing that. Instead, I would say save a little more money and put it towards a Canon M50 or a Canon 250D SL3, which are just so much better and easier to use for video production. And I've got playlists and video comparisons for both of these cameras already. And I'll link those down in the description below and in the cards above. If you're interested, go and check those out. If you have a Canon 4000D already and you've decided that you will be using it for video, then hopefully this video guide will be useful to you. Maybe go back and watch it again a few times to see all the steps you need to set it up for relatively good video. Additionally, if you have any questions or comments, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So that's it from me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, do consider subscribing to the channel and again, hitting that little bell for notifications. All that I've got left to say is stay creative, stay safe, imagine, implement and inspire and I'll catch you next time on Kai Creative.